but that's just me. I know many people that have started off by getting other people's money, putting zero down and buying the properties with, uh, you know, and being the lead manager on the project. Some have failed, some have succeeded. Sophie, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. The same. Thank you. Good, good, good. Yeah, I thought I had uh, typed in my question. I'm not sure if it popped up. Can you see it on your side? But okay. Yeah, it did pop up. But so the question is, what's the ideal amount of units to start off with? Right. Yeah. So just starting out, I've, I've you know, invested in some coaching. I've been following you and Bobby for quite some time now. And um, so my market right now, I currently live in. Um, Fayetteville, North Carolina. It's near an army base. There's an Amazon distribution center that's just um, about probably two weeks from opening up. It's right on the main corridor, I-95. There's a regional airport. It's a town of about 210,000 and growing. Has has good job market. Um, so my question is trying to bring value. Number one, yeah, the, the ideal market in terms of um, unit size, right? Um, cause what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to joint venture with eventually I'm going to need a, you know, a KP or a loan sponsor to, to sign off on a loan if I find a good deal. So I want to do two things. I want to bring value to somebody who's been in the space like you, you and Bobby. And, and not only that though, um, is 150, a, a good approach to look for because on all the podcasts and, and, and shows that I've listened to people being interviewed, they always say, Hey, I wish I would have started out big. I wish I would have went bigger versus, you know, starting out small. So I know you got to start somewhere, but I don't want to, you know, start small when in fact I could have potentially started bigger. So what are your thoughts on that? So, you know, today I did a podcast based on this. Um, you need to know where your financial means are at. How much money do you have for a down payment? That's where you need to start off. You could want to start huge. But if you only have $5,000, how can you start buying 150 units if you right. don't have the, the money for it? So forget where you want to start. It's how much money do you have to be able to invest in a property? And that's going to determine how many units you could purchase. Okay. Okay. Because, I mean, a bank is not going to let you just because you say, hey, bank, I want to buy 150 units, but I don't have the down payment for it. So I want you to give me a loan based on what I wish for, not what I can afford. Right. You, you won't be able to get the loan. So it's useless to go there. So what are your financial means at the moment that you are able to get? And you have to remember, depending right now, the interest rates are huge. Um, we don't know if they're going to stop where they're at or if they're going to continue increasing. Um, so you have to put down a substantial amount of money because right now banks are not just giving, you know, 2% loan. Oh, I'm going to put 2% down. You have to put, if you're, you've never invested in real estate, correct? Not in multifamily. No, I've done land and residential. Okay. What have you done in residential? Uh, gosh, say about close to 15 and then with land, uh, less than 10, more than five. And what and did you do with those, uh, residential homes? What did you do with them? Yeah. So on the, um, the fix and flip side of the house, um, and then early on, this was back in like 2008, I'm invested in kind of the software markets. This was back when. Toledo and Youngstown, Ohio was hit pretty bad. Um, invest, made some investments there. Um, done some wholesaling, licensed realtor um, for the state of Hawaii. So I do land deals there. And you know, just over the years, been networking with you know, investors that are looking to, to grow their portfolio. And I think that's what we're all looking to do is we're looking to grow our portfolio for the, the passive aspect of it. So do you, are you trying to do a syndicating deal? Like you want to bring in 
people with you? Yes. Yes. Starting out until I can build my balance sheet, because that's something that I've also learned is, you know, like you had said before, it's, if you're going to a bank, they probably want to see a track record, right? What have you done? And, and how are you, you know, because, yeah, I mean, credit's around 830, but that doesn't really matter from what I gather in terms of they treat a commercial asset like it's a business. And so what I want to do is I'd like to syndicate or even JV find a great deal and get a small percentage of the equity, whether it's one or 2%, just so that I can bring that forward and, and show a bank that, yes, you know, I've, I've been a part of, you know, one, two, three, four different types of uh, assets in the commercial space. Yeah. But how much, how much money do you have to bring to the table? Uh, probably around 80. Okay. Yeah. So you have two ways of doing this. The way that I would, would recommend you doing is maybe starting off with that money that you have to be able to buy yourself uh, maybe a duplex, a fourplex. I'm not sure in your market what they go for. And start with yourself. Learn the business because fix and flip is completely different than running a multifamily apartment building. Uh, managing a hundred plus unit is not easy. It's not as easy as people say, oh, I'm just going to go buy 100 units and, uh, you know, I'm just going to be able to manage it. It's not that easy. And you okay. could lose your investment that way. So me, my suggestion would be don't take no one's money. If you have that kind of money, go buy yourself a duplex. Uh, you know, something that, that you could then understand how the rental business works, how to be, you know, how to manage it. Even if it's only two units, it still gives you the heartbeat of like, you know, how to collect the rent, how to main, make sure that your service is taken care of the right way when they call in for a ticket, um, any kind of repairs that need to be done, those kind of things that you know how to handle the pressure. And then once you have, you know, I'm not going to say master it, but once you've gotten your feet in wet in it and you understand it, then maybe bring in other people's money where you could say, hey, I have the experience of managing X amount, two, three, four, five, six tenants, and I'm ready to move on to the next step. Would you like to come into a partnership with me? Um, I could be the, the managing partner, whatever it is. But going into something and going to someone and saying, hey, can I have your money? and invest it with me, but I've never done this before, but I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to make money on your money. Right. As how many people are really going to do that? Unless you really, really know them and they're your close friends and some won't, some family members will, some family members won't like me. I don't care if it's a family member or a friend. I still won't do it if you don't have experience in it okay. because I know what it is to, to go into a, investment without having experience in it. no matter how much um pma and you know everything you got but if you don't know how to do it hands-on i will not advise you to go big or take anybody's money until you don't do it with your own but that's oh. just me i know many people that have started off by getting other people's money putting zero down and buying the properties with the you know and being the lead manager on the project some have failed some have succeeded great no i appreciate that. That, that that's awesome okay yes but yeah my advice would go small and do it yourself <laughs> all right thank you you're very welcome hope that it uh works out and calm you know sign up for another q a if you have any other questions if you decide to look into it yes we'll do thank you okay take care yep you too